All right, so I know this NBA team gets a fair bit of hate, but if I'm going to be completely honest, I, I do think a lot of the hate is very, very unnecessary. And for those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, I am indeed talking about the Phoenix Suns who have been in the headlines for a lot of the wrong reasons, I think, this season. Uh, whether it's the constant controversy over the Kendall Jenner and Devin Booker, I don't even understand how it can be controversial to someone. The guy's just dating a Kardashian. It's not that serious. Of course, DeAndre Ayton wanting out, him getting into multiple fights with the coaches, this and that. They, uh, choking has been a big one as well. It's just, they're really not that bad. And I think... What's something that's really interesting is even though they get a lot of hate and they do face a tiny bit of backlash and this and that, they still manage to do one very important thing and that is winning. Look, they're not great in the playoffs. I'm not saying they have a terrific record in the playoffs again. A reason why a lot of people seem to hate them is because they manage to struggle in the playoffs when they do have a pretty decent team. But one thing we can't deny is they are a very, very nice regular season team. And this season has been a bit of a drop-off from last season. But they're still seeming like they're moving in somewhat of the right direction, being 20-16. and 16. Of course, this can all change with Devin Booker's most recent injury. For those of you who don't know this, I'm pretty sure it was reported. He's out for about a month, and he is the main scorer on this team. The team does rely on him to do a lot of things. I do know that, but... There are still a lot of positives to take away for this team. And if they do manage to lose a fair bit and get a negative record, it will, of course, be the Devin Booker thing. Now, we do know there are a couple of things that are going to be happening for this team. DeAndre Ayton will most likely not be on this team past the end of, you know, next free agency and all that type of stuff. I do think he'll be getting traded. I think Indiana still have genuine interest in the guy and Miles Turner could be an option there. I, I, I still think this team needs a number two uh, option. I don't think Aiton is the answer at number two anyway. Chris Paul, look, has been scoring more since Booker has been out. But for the most part this year, he's been averaging like 12 and 10. Uh, and this has mainly been a playmaker. He shouldn't be the second dude when it comes to scoring. I think they need a guy like that. And I think they might target a player like a DeMar Rosen or someone like that when the offseason has come around because we know that the Bulls look like they might be looking to trade a couple guys. But I do still think there's a couple things they need to do. And overall, depth, they do have pretty decent depth, but I still think improving on that would be a good thing. And in saying this, the Phoenix Suns have, of course, been really interested in both Eric Gordon, Gordon, sorry, I don't know why I had a British accent when I said that, and Kenyon Martin Jr. And this is all being reported by Eric Pincess. Now, I do like this move, although I would maybe wait till free agency to go for Eric Gordon. If there's, if Devin Booker is going to miss, like, let's just say 20 games, and in those 20 games, they don't do too well. I think since Booker's been injured, they're like one and four or something. Let's just say this record continues and they're like, who knows, maybe like seven or eight, eight games they win in their last 20 and they lose like 12. They're going to have like a bit of an even record. And look, you can bounce on that in the playoffs. But if Booker's injury is a bit more worse and does even stay out a lot longer, you could be looking at maybe a lottery pick, which could actually help this team out and be pretty good. I don't really think there is necessarily a rush to trade for Eric Gordon. I think this season was always going to be a step back to somewhat regroup maybe for Phoenix is how it's looking like. They could still surprise me and come and do a very good thing in the playoffs, but with a bunch of injuries that they've had, this and that, and looking like the team really relies on Devin Booker to win games, I, I feel like you can maybe go into the offseason and maybe make a couple of changes here. Now, the new minimum, I believe, for the NBA is now like 3 million. I remember when the minimum was like 1.8 or something like that. The minimum has gone up, I believe, uh, just because we know teams are paying a lot more for players now the salary cap i think is supposed to be going up in a year or something something pretty crazy but right now as it does stand eric gordon would actually be a really nice fit for this phoenix suns team it's just whether or not they need to go for him they can go for him they can just say look we will give up we will give up you know 
maybe Jay Crowder and we can try and match the salaries and see if we can work it out from here. But the reality is, is Jay Crowder necessarily going to work on the Houston Rockets? I'm not sure. He desperately wants to be on a team where he starts and I think Houston, they're going to be looking for, if they're going to bring in these veteran players, they want leaders. And Jay Crowder is not a leader and it's been very shown this season as he's literally sat the season out because he didn't get his way and didn't get to start. If I do look at it like this, there are a couple of things the Phoenix Suns need to, again, address in the offseason. And um, first of all, maybe trading Jay Crowder away to match up a salary could be a good option. But I do think going for Eric, uh, you know, Eric Gordon would be a, would be a better thing. I, I think going for Eric Gordon would be a better thing to do on the offseason than maybe trading for him now. Because Eric Gordon's actually on a big contract of around 16 million. Uh, and that's going to be pretty hard to trade for when Phoenix's salary cap is actually pretty tame. Like, let's just say they move on from Aiton, right? Let's just say they move on from Aiton and they move on from Crowder and they get like a first round pick back, right? Whatever. Uh, obviously, that's never going to happen. They're going to get a lot more for Crowder on this and that. This is just a made up scenario to remove salary cap, right? If they do that, right, they get all their first round picks back for Aiton, this and that. And you do that, you just have Devin Booker on the 33 million, Chris Paul on 28 million, and Mikel Bridges on 20 million. After that, most people on this team are going to be a free agent. Cam Sharp, yes, he's on 6.5. Oh, Cam Payne, sorry, he's on 6.5 million. That's not much. Landry Shamit's on 10 million, but I have a feeling they're going to try and trade him. But you've got like Jay Crowder's 10 million, which will be expiring. You'd be getting rid of, you know, um, you get, get rid of, sorry, Aiton's 30 million. There you go. That's 40 million right there. Sarich is 10 million, basically. 50 million. Tory Craig's 5 million. This and that. There's going to be some salary cap room, I think, to move next season. They will probably try and move Aiton on for like a, uh, I think, a potential Miles Turner, maybe. Something like that would actually be low-key. Pretty cool. But there's going to be some salary cap here. Uh, I'm, I think they've got a mid-level exception as well. Literally could try and get Eric Gordon in on the minimum. Will he take that? Probably not. There's going to be teams that are going to be bidding for more. I think if you got Eric Gordon with a $5 million deal, that's actually not even that bad. That's actually pretty good. That's only a couple million over the minimum and actually makes relatively nice sense. If you can go up to, I, I think, Schuster now and say, look, we like what we see out of Eric Gordon. We like what we see out of Kenyon Martin. Can we strike a deal where we give you Crowder and like two or three second round picks? Could that could that be done? Because maybe Houston say to themselves, Crowder could start. Crowder could actually help out this team. He adds the much needed defense. Will he start? I'm, I really don't know. The way they've been starting, they have been playing, I think, KJ Martin at center for a lot of this year. Um, and power forward as well. Again, they've started Alfred and Shengu now, which is what they need to be doing. Why he didn't start some games, I'm a little confused of. But KJ Martin played like small ball center then. That was just like weird. Right now, they've got Smith and KJ Martin playing the forwards. If you're Phoenix, you could say, we'll give you Crowder. Crowder can start in KJ Martin's spot. He'll add better defense and he'll add better three-point shooting while being more of a role player. And spacing the floor out for Jalen Green and Jabari Smith to do their work. Could Houston accept that? Yes, they definitely might. KJ Martin has been good, but it makes sense to maybe accept that. It's just whether or not Crowder will stay and if you're going to want to start him. Because if you're not going to want to start Jay Crowder, that guy is going to leave. He literally left the Miami Heat because they didn't promise him a starting lineup. Uh, in the starting lineup, sorry. Which was true. They brought in PJ Tucker to start instead. That was a stupid decision by Miami. Which I think they definitely wish they can have their time back. But then Phoenix, they actually made the good decision to start Cam Johnson over him. And we know Jay Crowder cracked the shits and didn't like that. So, yes, it does make sense. Maybe for a move to happen like this. But the salary caps, even then, the contracts wouldn't really match up heaps. I'm not sure if Phoenix can even take on that extra $6 million that you'd have to pay for Eric Gordon because of Crowder's on 10, Gordon's on 16. Still a $6 million you got to somehow match up. I'm not sure if and how they would do it. They could maybe offer up Torrey Craig, but I actually really like Torrey Craig on this Phoenix team. I don't know if Eric Gordon with his old age is a whole lot better than Torrey Craig. He's probably a better scorer and shooter, but Craig actually adds some pretty good defense sometimes. It's just, I guess, how Phoenix evaluate 
their team and if they think this is a move they should be maybe making. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all those NBA content and NBA news. Don't forget to comment your thoughts and opinions on this down below. If you guys were the Houston Rockets or Phoenix Suns, would you maybe make this move or not? Definitely let me know. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to my you know, gaming channel and my iRoll size vlogging channel. All of them will be getting linked down below. But as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.